K-State Online here with another debate series with Derek Young and Grant Flanders. Thank you for tuning into our YouTube channel. Check out our website if you want. Got tons of information there if you're a K-State site and not a subscriber to that yet. But this is free to you right now. And it's debate series every Sunday. We come out with a different topic to talk about, to debate. And I win every week. Isn't that right, Derek? <laughs> Absolutely not. So a few weeks ago, we, took, we did a football one. Last, I, last week, we did basketball. So now let's go back to football. And this time, we are going to discuss who is – wait, what, what, was, what were we discussing again? I completely forgot. The most challenging – the toughest, toughest, toughest home know. game for football. Yeah, the toughest home game of the season for the Wildcats. Um, I, and there's four of them. So you have Texas is the first one, KU – Texas Tech, and then they finish up with Oklahoma State down the road. I mean, there's only two options here, dude. Yeah, the, the options are Oklahoma State and Texas. I don't think that we expect Tech or KU to top either one of those. I know you're probably sweating the Longhorns a little bit. but yeah. I, I, It's really hard not to go with Oklahoma State. They have a three-headed monster on the offensive side of the ball. They're bringing back Spencer Sanders. He was pretty raw last year and definitely went through his struggles. He was really good against K-State, actually, though. It's still water. But um, I think that he's probably on his way to becoming more of a complete quarterback. At least he'll be a much better. And he's, he's a really good athlete. He's a dynamite threat um, on the ground, for sure. Probably more of a threat in that way. And he needs to be crowded a little bit when it comes to the passing game. But there's a, quite a bit of potential in, in that area when it comes to him. Chuba Hubbard is going to play in the NFL. Um, first, second-round pick. Might be the best running back in football this year in a college game. He's he's definitely up up for up in contention for that uh, designation. Um, and then I think perhaps despite all the talent at receiver in the Big Twelve last year, you can make an argument that the best one was Tylen Wallace mm -hmm. uh, before he got hurt, and even the year before. I've always loved Tylen Wallace, and he's always been a big fan of his, and thinking that he's one of the best players in the Big Twelve. I even thought I think I think I picked him as to be Big Twelve Offensive Player of the Year last year, but um, I he might be the best receiver in the country. So you, you, have a, you have a chance to have an offense in Stillwater this year where the, where the best running back in the country and the best wide receiver in the country are on that offensive side of the ball for Mike Gundy and the Cowboys. And mm -hmm. it's going to make them really tough to beat because of that. Um, it kind of reminds you of some of their, you know, when they went through that six, seven-year stretch, they went 10 games at least every single season, and they, they were kind of a top 10 perennial power there for a bit. Mm -hmm. They felt slacked off a little bit um, in recent years, but this – roster formation kind of reminds you of some of those great teams from Oklahoma State that Mike Gundy had not too long ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I liked Oklahoma State. I like their skill guys, but I still got to go Texas because to me, that, that game is where you have been a, a veteran quarterback, Sam Ellinger, going into his senior year. Right? Is that right? His senior season? His final yeah. year there, he's going to – last year he was, he was a preseason uh, Big 12 player of the year – didn't, didn't get those honors, but this year, I mean, he has a real shot at getting that title, and it's not going to be easy for K-State. I think, you think Chuba Hubbard and Tylen Wallace are incredible. I do, too. Texas might have two guys coming in. Well, one they had last year, but sat behind as their third receiver behind Colin Johnson and DuVernay. Brennan Eagles, I think he could have a breakout year, become one of those receivers that is looked at in the first round of the draft whenever he comes out. And then you have that five-star running back, Bijan Robinson, um, out of Arizona that Texas was able to beat out Ohio State for. Thank you to Derek Young for that information to help me with my argument. <laughs> but I do believe they are going to have an offense that, yes, losing a, a few big pieces in Colin Johnson and DuVernay still gets better. And adding a five-star running back where they desperately needed last year, that running game, to work. And they had uh, – uh, Ingram, uh, whatever his first name was, Ingram, um, he, he struggled with injuries. And when he struggled with injuries, they had to bring in a backup quarterback. So when that happens, you obviously have issues back there. They cleaned them up with Bijan Robinson. I think they're going to be the tougher, tougher opponent at home this season, along with their defense. Their defense is getting better as well. Um, I think Oklahoma State's getting better, too, but I think Texas, with Ellinger in his last year, if it wasn't Ellinger at the helm and we were talking about a new guy coming in, it would be a completely different story. 
But with this veteran quarterback at the helm, he's going to be hungry for a Big 12 championship, especially after Oklahoma defeated them and, and uh, uh, took that honor away from them. Oklahoma's going to be maybe a little more vulnerable without their uh, high-powered quarterback and, and running uh, receiver. So I think, I think that those are the two teams to look out for are Oklahoma and Texas at the end of the day. So give me Texas at home for the toughest game uh, this season for K-State. I think, I think the best argument for Texas is probably when you compare the quarterbacks of the two teams, I would definitely much rather have Sam Ellinger than a Wood Spencer Sanders. That's the way I understand an argument. And on the other side, you know, Texas probably will return a better defense. Not probably. They are going to return a better defense than what Oklahoma State will. So there is that just definitely for Texas. I just think that the gap and just the production level that you can get from Chuba Hubbard and Kyle Wallace is probably a difference maker for me and why I think that Oklahoma State just – probably gets the nod over the Longhorns. Both are good. I think both are good enough this year to even challenge Oklahoma for the Big 12 championship. Uh, obviously, Oklahoma is going to always going to probably be the favorite again, even with a new quarterback under center, which will likely be Spencer Rattler. Um, they're going to be good. There, there's no question about that. And Lincoln Riley's system is definitely going to be very conducive to what Rattler can do. And his numbers will probably be uh, particularly explosive. Uh, at the same time, this is probably – is should be at least a little bit more vulnerable Oklahoma than what we're accustomed to seeing the past, you know, three, four, or five years. So that does open the door for a team like Oklahoma State or a team like Texas. And, you know, if it all shakes right, hopefully K-State at the end of the day as well too. But um, it is more wide open, the league, in terms of who can who can get that number one spot, I think. And I think Oklahoma State is definitely in contention and why I kind of like them is more so because just how – demonstratively impactful Hubbard and Sanders yeah. are. Uh, Sam Ellinger is, is, is a challenge, but I would still think that Spencer Sanders can make, you know, enough of an improvement to kind of move the needle for Oklahoma State in comparison to Texas as well. And if we're still going to debate here and I'm trying to win, I'll always also say Oklahoma State beat Kansas State even though it was in Stillwater fairly comfortably last year, handled them pretty well. I think that was the game with a lot of rain, if I'm not mistaken, had a couple of delays. Um, and Kent State just never really um, factored in as much as they wanted to in that, in that contest. And then when, you're, when you fast forward later in the season when Kansas State played Texas, it might be because Kansas State was a better squad, but they should have beat Texas and definitely had the opportunity to beat Texas in Austin. I think they jumped out to a 14 method lead and kind of surrendered that lead and, and I think the Longhorns came back for the game winning field goal as time expired. I think this season, you kind of mentioned it earlier, with uh, it could be wide open. And a, a, especially you didn't, a guy you didn't even mention that who I think we both might agree is the best quarterback in the league. Brock Purdy could even have a chance possibly to, to shake things up in the Big 12. But at the end of the day, I still look at Texas. I still think Texas is – I. I think this is Texas's best, biggest, best chance with a with a vulnerable OU, like you said, um, and and Texas, you know, they're kind of in the they're in the the seat with everyone else in the Big Twelve besides OU because they haven't really done anything really in the Big Twelve in a long time, so they're going to be hungry for it. Um, so I just think at the, the team, end, yeah, the team we haven't talked about is Baylor, and they almost won the Big yeah, Twelve last year. They made the title game. game. Um, they bring back Charlie Brewer at quarterback. We haven't really mentioned them. I don't think they're going to be as good. They especially lose a considerable amount off of what was easily the best defense in the Big 12. That was a nasty defense last year. And, of course, they lose their head coach as well. So Dave Aranda, new head coach of the Baylor Bears. Yeah. And But to Oklahoma State's credit, I do think Oklahoma State's probably going to be up there with Iowa State. I, still, I think Oklahoma State's going to be the most fun offense to watch in the league this year. With Chubb, both the most big plays. Yep. Tylen Wallace, you know how much I love him. He's an incredible player. Um, but I do think at the I think at the end of the day, Texas is going to be the more sturdy, sturdy program um, and, and execute when they need to execute. I don't know about Gundy either, as far as his point in his career, how serious he actually is at winning Big Twelves anymore. I know if he gets the opportunity and they're there and they have this team, I'm sure he can get revved up to do it. Well, I do think. But what's Tom Herman done? What's Tom Herman done? I think Tom Herman will be focused from day one. That's the thing. This is the proving point. Tom Herman, yeah. you know he's done this year, man. Hot seat. Hot seat. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you let Baylor get to that Big 12 championship game before you could. Yep. Man, 
And I agree. Then, and Matt Rule's on the way out. Let's see. Let's see what happens. If Baylor gets it again, then you definitely got to get rid of it. <laughs> Tom Herman. If it's Oklahoma yeah. Baylor in the Big 12 championship game. <laughs> oh, man. So I win. Okay. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Tell, tell us in the comments. Uh, on the board, wherever you are, uh, tell us who won this 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 debate. Uh, for Derek Young, I'm Grant Flanders. This has been fun. Dubs. Tell your friends. friends. Tell your friends. <laughs>